Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Dauber's Quest for the Key. Dauber's Quest for the Key is a hand management slash deck building game that involves a board. You're going to be playing as one of the Daubers, and there's four to choose from in a two to four player game, and you're going to be trying to get a key. This key would actually unlock a shamble man that would destroy the forest, and a fairy is in search of the key first. If she gets to the key, she's actually going to unleash the shamble man and destroy the forest, but if you can get there first, you you are going to be the winner. Now, of course, there's other daubers that are going to be around to help uh, uh, try and get the key first as well, like Shiori and Gavin over here and two others. And what you're trying to do is build your deck the best you can, gain as much currency as you possibly can, and use your cards so that you can overcome obstacles, locations, and monsters. Now, it's a competitive game, so your opponents are all going to be placing locations on the board to block you, making it more difficult for you to get the key first so that they can claim victory and show off the fact that they got the key instead of you. And because of that, they might put down a forest tile as well as maybe a monster or a rat or something nasty along with some weaponry and if they can do that they'll stall you and have more opportunity to get there first and you can do that as well if you can reach the key before anybody else you'll be the winner of the game let's go ahead and check it out so here we have the game daubers and we're gonna go ahead and show you what is all included in the game obviously you're gonna have this big board along with four player decks and four player character cards these cards are gonna tell you what bonus abilities they have as well as bonus starting items as well as your deck of cards which you'll have ten of and you'll be drawing five at a time, you're going to get bottle caps, you're going to get a wooden knife and a traveling kit, but you'll be upgrading these as you go throughout the game. You're also going to get a player pawn that will move through the board as they accomplish certain little obstacles, like here you need two in order to pass through here, and three, and so on and so forth. Down over here are two types of cards. You've got the location cards, and then you've got the monster or uh, creature cards that are, that are evil, they're bad. And you'll be placing these down on the board in these locations to hinder players from going across, along with then playing an animal, and it tells you on the bottom here symbols where they're going to be placed and as you do that you're going to get new ones so when you draw one of these you're going to put a new one down you've also got the Dauber's deck which is going to show you six different cards to purchase of all wide variety kinds of colors you got purple and green and yellow and blue and I think red as well and there are going to give you challenge bonuses as well as the ability to draw additional cards or accomplish tasks throughout the game you're also going to get a couple tokens here you're going to get money tokens and then movement tokens and so on and so forth and that is the basic idea of what you're going to this. You're going to get this, you're going to get the rule book, and you're also going to get a box for the game. All right, let me tell you how to play a couple turns. So on your turn, you're going to get your deck of cards, you're going to shuffle it, and then you're going to draw five cards. At the beginning of the game, you're more likely to get bottle caps than anything else because you only have two other objects in the deck, like I was talking to you about before, the wooden knife and the traveling kit. So once you draw your hand of five, most likely bottle caps, and these each are worth influence or the currency of the game. You can choose to buy cards with these if you would like, and all the cards have a certain price range on them. This one here is at the top left-hand corner, and it says two influence to buy this card. When you buy cards, you're gonna put them in your discard pile, and when you play them, they go to the, your discard pile as well. Playing cards is going to influence what you can do on your turn. There's three really real types of uh, things that can happen in the game. You have challenges, which are generally going to be yellow. You've got uh, another form which is red this is actually going to be a wild either challenge or movement and then you've got blue this is specifically for movement the final is obviously the currency which is the influence and you can get these as well with the cards that you're playing once you've gone ahead and played all five cards from your hand you're going to end your turn draw five cards up if your deck is empty you're going to shuffle your discard pile back into your deck and draw five cards again and players are going to move around the board doing that now if they want to cross over a certain location I'll explain more below you're going to actually need to play cards that are going to have allow you to move across locations based on what kind of currency you have so if you need for instance it says three blue three movement you're going to need three movement in any combination of red or blue sometimes you run across challenges or locations and that'll tell you specifically what you need to play in order to do so there's other cards that you're going to be getting throughout the deck that is going to influence how you're going to be drawing extra cards or discarding and are making your opponents lose specific things and what's more interesting too is you're going to have three types of items right you can have or three types of things you can use you have uh, items you have armor and then you got weapons. You can have one of each of these things, and as you go along with the game, you're going to then place them or replace them, changing the way your character works. So let's go ahead and take you below and show you a couple turns of how to play the game. So I've went ahead and set it up for two players, and this setup's pretty easy. You have all the monsters over here and all the locations over here. You shuffle these decks up, flip them over, and add two to each side here. And then you're going to take the Dauber's deck, which is going to offer your equipment and uh, items and spells, and you're going to de shuffle the deck and deal out six cards here. Every player is going to start with a character card that has its own unique ability 
ability as well as its own starting currency that you'll be using every single turn you play, and your character will start on the start location. The beginning of the game is pretty simple. You're going to take your deck of cards, make sure that you shuffle them up good, and then draw five cards. After you've drawn five cards from the deck, you're then going to look at them and see what you can do. So uh, look over here, five bottle caps. No surprise, really, right? Now, with your currency, you can do a couple things. First of all, you can buy locations, or you can choose to buy creatures, but you can only buy creatures if a location is already down without a creature. Another thing you can do is simply buy cards from this deck here, and the cost is in the top left-hand corner, like I was saying before. Also, it'll tell you what you're going to get when you play the cards, specifically on the side here, and then also what bonuses you can get. Bonuses are generally going to be denoted by this little highlighted area. Whenever you play a card of that specific color when playing this card, you'll get that bonus as well. So playing both of these cards together means you get a challenge bonus and to draw a card. Playing this by itself with a blue card is just going to allow you to draw a card, but you're always going to gain this basic bonus here. So with five currency, they can choose to buy this ranger's cloak or maybe this lucky swing or simply choose to play a stone fence on a location. So if it's this player over here, he'd probably want to put this location over here, making it more difficult for this player to go across. Why? Because on the back of these cards, it shows a challenge and what happens when you succeed and what happens when you fail and uh, what you're going to need in order to succeed. Usually it's going to be either a challenge or um, one of these red tokens here, the universal tokens. Uh, so that is the basic idea, but I think for right now to start the game, he's probably going to want to upgrade his stuff. And this ranger bow looks, ranger cloak looks really nice. It's armor or it's an item, which means he can have one of these item cards. He'll put this into his discard pile after spending five and he'll put the five currency into his discard pile as well and then re leave the remaining five cards here. He's then going to draw up his new hand of five cards and as you know it'll be the two other cards here which is going to be the traveler's kit and the wooden knife and that'll be his hand which is always secret from other players. The next player is then going to get to go and he's going to draw his five cards and see what he gets and he has oh he's got the wooden knife and the traveling kit that's nice he's also got three bottle caps so he's got a travel bonus of one and he's also got two universal. So he could, if he wants, choose to use a universal on a travel to move across the space right here, because that's gonna cost two. He's still also gonna have one universal left and a bottle cap, which means he's got four currency. So we can always use these as well. And this says he has a bonus influence whenever he acquires effects from the adventure row. Okay, so bonus influence, that's pretty cool. So for four, he can choose to buy something. Now remember, whenever you buy a card from this location, you need to put a new one down. And he'll choose to take this lucky swing. That's plus three to a challenge, that's really nice. He'll go to his card pile and he'll remove the rest of these cards because he doesn't have any use and if you don't use it you lose it no matter what and he'll draw up his next five cards just like the other player did and play is going to continue so now he's got his five cards and of, of course he's got his one currency here is one universal another universal here he could choose to move with these two or actually with these two and now he's got four currency left and we well, gotta make sure we fill that deck that's very important maybe he'll choose the bone bone staff and helpful because he has enough currency to buy that these will go to his discard pile and then two new cards come out and play will continue. And that's the basic idea. You're going across these spaces and they cost more as you go through them, especially if you run into a challenge. So for instance, if this player were to have bought this card and then maybe on the next turn bought this card here and it denotes the images, you can actually also put weapons and armor and items and stuff like that. But if this player wants to go across here, he has to deal with these challenges here. And let's go ahead and look at them really quick, see what one of these challenges might be. So this one says it's a victory if, uh, if, if you defeat this, which is gonna cost you two universal and one, which means you can use uh, basically any kind of red or blue or um, or challenge, which is yellow. Then it says on the first attempt uh, to climb the stone fence, you fall on your head. But you add two challenge tokens to your hero unless you discard an equipment card of your choice from play. If you fail, uh, destroy one equipment card of your choice from play and move back two spaces, meaning that you have to deal with this again. Whenever you flip these over, they remain face up though. This one over here is the plates of rock on a rock mole's back are as hard as stone. So I'll give you a little flavor text there. It's gonna be one as well. And victory, even and in victory, your hand stings from striking the stone solid beast. Discard an equipment card of your choice. But if you fail, destroy one of your equipment cards of your choice from play. So he's not going to make you move back, but this will. And so it's very important that you have the necessary resources to not only go across here, but also to deal with the monsters and locations. And no matter what's here, is going to be just added as a bonus. So if some player would have put an extra piece of armor on this guy, you'd actually have to deal with this as well. So it can get stronger and stronger and harder to deal with. And once these are played down, you're obviously going to take these new cards and put them here 
here and you can still now buy from other stuff there. And as you go across, it's pretty simple. If, like, sometimes you have the choice of going this way or this way because you just need to reach this key here. And whoever reaches this key first and deals with any of the challenges or whatever uh, on this location is going to be the winner. If they can make the space, deal with the challenges and secure the key, they're going to win the game. That's the basic idea of how you play this game. Let's go ahead and talk about all the different items and some of the locations above. So now that you have a good grasp of how to play the game, let's go ahead and talk about some of the cards that you can purchase as well as the cards you can put down on the field to mess with your opponents. This one here is called a Cloak of Shadows. It's going to cost you six, and once per turn you can destroy one card from your hand. If you do, gain the following bonus. Uh, two plus two universal. That's pretty good. And a challenge bonus, whenever you play another purple card on your turn, you're going to gain plus one uh, challenge bonus as well. So that's really strong. But it costs a lot. Six is quite a bit. Rot is a cool card. I, this is one of my favorites here. Destroy up to two cards from the adventure or challenge row, and which is basically the two sides of the card, two areas of cards. And then you're going to get to replace them. And after that, you can destroy one of your cards uh, from your deck and put it into the discard pile. Or, or uh, yeah, that, that's that's very useful as well. You're thinning out your deck. And not only that, but you could choose if you don't want to remove any of those two cards to draw a card instead. Uh, a hardy mushroom. It only costs you one, but it's going to give you plus one of these. Um, what is this one here? This is the universal. And then to also draw a card. That's cool as well. You've got luck lets you draw a card plus a travel bonus whenever you play green. And target player must discard one card from their hand of choice. That's really strong. Here's another armor piece of armor. Uh, iron bark plus one universal plus one challenge. Silver armor is plus one currency or influence plus one one um was this a universal and then if your hero has two additional silver equipment cards active you can gain plus two influence on your turn and they just go range from that they got the bow you got a bone sword lantern silver sword and they all have this really cool like little cartoony artwork right fierce blow the challenge card plus two uh, or a challenge bonus. So some of the cards are just simply playing them and some of them are equipping them to your hero. When you equip something on your hero, it stays until it has to get removed by either a challenge or not successfully doing something or your opponent can actually play cards to remove them. So that, that can happen as well. Let's talk about some of the different locations here. Here is one of them. This is called the Dark Tunnels. It's going to cost you five to put on the board. And whenever somebody goes across it, they have to deal with three universal. Uh, and it says plus one card on your next draw phase. You find coins in the darkness and add plus two influence to your hero if you succeed this. And if you fail, back stuff happens. Maybe you're going to go to go backwards or uh, suffer some kind of item loss. There's a couple things that can happen. There's also monsters like this wood sprite here, and she's the one that's trying to get the key before you guys so she can unlock the shamble man. And uh, she's going to cost three universal to deal with, and it's immune to action points given to your hero from wood equipment. So if you have a wood equipment equipped that has universal, it won't matter. It doesn't help. And a challenge bonus of plus two whenever somebody plays a purple. So you got to be very careful with this one. Very difficult to deal with. Thorn vines, castle walls, dense brush. There's a lot of different locations you can put down on the board, and they're going to be used to hinder your opponents and successfully allow you to get across the board easier to make sure you reach that key. Those are the basic ideas of the game and how you simply play it. Let me tell you what I think about it. So Dober's Quest for the Key is a simple deck management slash deck construction game. You're going to basically be drawing cards from an area, putting them into your discard pile, and shuffling them into their deck to make it stronger and stronger as you go along. All at the same time, having your opponents have to deal with harder monsters and harder locations because you're going to be using the, your, your your influence and all that other stuff to buy creatures and buy locations and kind of making them have to deal with challenges. If they succeed though, they're going to get bonuses and if they fail they might have to go back or lose equipment. So that's kind of kind of deadly. And it's kind of a kid's game. It feels like pretty much anybody can play this game once you get the feel for it. Um, they actually, a father and a son helped us construct this game and his son is about 11 years old so he has actually put some influence in this as I was reading about it and I think that's pretty cool and it kind of shows too which is nice. It's a nice deck builder that's kind of like a gateway deck builder into the more complex versions of deck builders that you can get out there, like brass and whatnot. But this one is solid. I like the fact that it has a lot of the cartoony artwork, and it feels fun. It kind of reminds me of, I don't know, Fern Goalie and that kind of style of artwork. And it feels like you're always having to progress and improve, but at a certain time, you're going to be stuck with a challenge you can't defeat, and that's when it's time to deck build and construct. And you can really get into the heaviness of deck building in this as well, as making a, a solid construction where you're drawing four dis or drawing three, discarding four, drawing these four up again, and then kind of manipulating your deck to do the things you want it to do, all while your opponents are trying to hinder you. A nice little added touch is just putting the armor and the items and the weapons next to you, and that kind of gives your character bonuses, and your opponents can also make you lose those items as well. And the storyline works. You're obviously trying to get the key, and you want to have that 
you want to have that victory and feel that, you know, everybody's working kind of together, but rea in reality, it's just one person who's going to have the glory and the fame. But at the same time, you don't want that sprite to get it, which is just kind of the story with the shamble man. And yeah, it just all works. It's really enjoyable. It's something probably the serious uh, hardened deck builder players are not going to want to, not going to like as much, but it's definitely good for a family game, your first deck building experience, or if you have a lot of kids, this is going to be definitely one you should check out. So if you're interested, I suggest you check out Dober's The Quest the key. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, then check out our star videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. Please, we do greatly appreciate it. As well as checking out Dover's The Quest for the Key, currently on Kickstarter in the description below. You can go ahead and check that out. As well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We got tons of stuff going on. Two different giveaways: the Gate of Verlay, as well as the Kingdoms of Erden second expansion. You can go ahead and try and win those. And checking out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the Giveaway Geek, and Ferdinand the cardboard stack. They do tons of tutorials and they've got blog posts and uh, all the other good stuff. So go ahead and check those sites out as well as my friend the YouTuber. Alright, well that's what I got for this game and I look forward to seeing you next time.